Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another unprepared episode <laughs> of Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and those who bring you Photoshop User Magazine. Look at that, Dave. Have, did you do something new to your hands? Yeah, I've been using moisturizer for it's, some time. I can time tell, to Dave. Get the model <laughs> hand thing going on. <laughs> well, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Photoshop User TV. Uh, we are here today in the studio with Mr. Dave Cross. Hello. And then over here on my right-hand side, back at least 10 feet away, <laughs> Corey Barker. Hello. Corey, you look so enthused to be there. You're like, I, I am all too happy. <laughs> I'm this, happy is what Corey, this is before Corey said hello, this is what he looked like. I am, uh, this was me. <laughs> there we go. Let's just get through this. No. <laughs> hello, I'm here. <laughs> cool. And uh, over there in the, the weather center, RC Concepcion. Hey everybody, what's going on? How are you guys? How's the weather looking today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty black. The, uh, <laughs> the mountains of Louisiana, right here. <laughs> Look a little bit. Uh, what was it? The plains of Minnesota Plains. Was Minnesota. it? <laughs> Minnesota Plains. That's right. So what's going on, everybody? Uh, excited. It's good to be back. I know. I know. It's uh, it's it's been a while since the four of us have mm -hmm. all been on a, on a show together. So that's pretty. Cool. It is a throwback episode. Throwback. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got lots of cool tutorials. Hey, real real quick. So Dave held up Photoshop User Magazine. I am going to ask you guys to do one thing. If you are a NAP member, go and log on to the NAP member website. If you're a NAP member and you've forgotten your login ID or anything like that, call customer service. Send them an email, do something. Go to the NAP member website. We've been doing a lot of stuff on, on that member website there. There's, there's, there's multiple posts. There's at least a post every day, and sometimes there's posts. Um, you know, I know Corey and RC and, and Dave, are, everybody's jumping in there, but sometimes there's a couple of posts a day uh, between tutorials, articles, polls, lots of great mm -hmm. stuff. It, is, it, has become a, it has become a very thriving community yeah. on the if website you haven't, If you haven't been there in a while, it's definitely nothing like you remember. Well, it's, and it's, it's been re totally mm -hmm. redesigned. It's been redesigned to take advantage of, yeah. of kind of a, a community type of a website. So if you haven't been there in a while, you're a NAP member, make sure you go check it out. If you're not a NAP member, well then join NAP so you can go <laughs> check out the website. And you'll get this. And you'll get the magazine too. 10 times a year. Okay. I think I got a quick tutorial here. You think so? I hope so. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to, uh, to take a, a quick minute to show you. We, we get a lot of questions about compositing and collaging and all these different things. Um, it, a lot of people think you have to always start a composite by shooting a photo in the studio and everything like that. And by all means, trust me, you'll get much better results if you start your composites that way. However, there are some pretty neat things we can do from just uh, random photos that we take out there. This was a photo I shot at a uh, University of South Florida football game. So I want, I'm going to take this one, the, the, the guy running with the ball, and I'm going to take him, I'm going to put him into kind of a multi-photo collage where we use the same exact photo twice. So I'm going to use my quick selection tool here, and uh, I'll just make a very quick selection, hence the name of the tool. And it kind of, you'll notice it kind of just sticks just kind of goes right on the outside. If you don't have contrast around whatever you're selecting, then you're screwed. <laughs> um, seriously, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot harder to select. Grab the pen tool and start. Yeah, it really is an edge detection tool, so yeah. if you can't see an edge, it's not going to detect it. Yeah, and, and let me, and I, Dave, Corey, RC will all, will all uh, test to this, that if you don't have edges and you're trying to make a clean selection, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I mean, seriously, Certainly it's, from it, it is. There, yeah. is there is really no non, unless you want to trace it with the pen tool. And you want to sit there and go pixel yeah, by pixel. Yeah, exactly. Which isn't fun. All right, and uh, let's get the rest of his shoe down here. So it's worth taking just a minute or two to kind of get everything um, looking pretty good. If you happen to go too far, hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt on PC, and that'll subtract from your selection. So that's, that's looking pretty good at this point. I'm going to hit the Refine Edge dialog box. And uh, let's turn on Smart Radius and just crank up the radius a little bit. And, uh, and that should do a pretty good job here of kind of, you know, smoothing out any of those edges. Bring our radius down. There, that looks good. And uh, I'll click OK. And that's going to put a selection around him. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move it into my background. I'm going to paste it in. 
Let's take the first copy here and let's make it really large. I'm gonna put it right, right in the background, right about there. Hit enter, return. Couple of things we have to do here. I am gonna make another copy of it before I do anything because I wanna start changing that first copy. So let's just hide that one. We'll go back to the first copy. I'm gonna change the blend mode here to soft light. And now you'll see that that blends him into the background a little bit. And then I'll press Command or Control J. And that, that kind of intensifies the effect. But what we're going to do here is we're going to desaturate. We're going to take all the color out of it and then reduce the opacity. So you see when I turn these two layers on and off, you can kind of see what we've done here. We've kind of just put a faded version of the football player in the back. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'll come down here and I'll just take the saturation down, maybe take the brightness up a little bit. And, uh, and you can see there that kind of just, I guess you could, you could say it kind of fades it into mm -hmm. the background a little bit. So we'll do that and we'll take that layer and we'll clip it so it only affects the layer below it. So that's one copy of the football player. And we'll take the other copy and we'll make this one smaller. And I'll put him right over the image, right about there. All right. And then kind of step back from it for a second. If I look at this, I think it's still too intense. We don't want this to be like the star of the show. You just kind of want that background copy to, to almost fade into the background a little bit. And then the last thing to do to this top copy here is double click that layer. If you take a look, notice how the edge, the edge is almost kind of too perfect. We don't want to put a drop shadow behind it because a drop shadow makes it look like he's, he should be like almost laying on top of the page. We don't want to do that. What we do is we put an outer glow around it, change the blend mode to multiply, and change the color to black. And when I increase the size a little bit here, take down the opacity, it's hard to see. You kind of lose it for a second. But take a look. That's before and that's after. You see how it kind of just... It's hard, it, it kind of just kind of like sets him into the photo a little bit. It gets rid of the edge that you'd see around here. You don't want there to be a really hard edge that mm -hmm. kind of shows around the photo. And it kind of sets him into it a little bit and it just helps out. And then you throw some text over there at the bottom. And you've got, again, just like, I guess you can just call it a multi-photo collage. You're using the same exact photo, but you're using it in kind of two different ways there. So you're, yeah. you're, you're, making, you're making a better collage out of just one photo instead of and having multiple One photos. thing I think is important to note, because a lot of people quite correctly think, but I don't want to enlarge a photograph because I could lose detail. But when you enlarged it, it's so faded in the background, it doesn't really yeah, matter if you lose it. It's not like you're keeping yeah. it at 100%. Yeah, no, that's, it, again, it's, that's meant to be a secondary element back there, just this kind of faded into the background, but you never actually see the detail. Sweet. Cool. All right, Dave. Yes, I'm looking sir. at the teleprompter, and it's got a tutorial from Ooh, you on it, too. Yay. All righty. Well, I, was, uh, I like to experiment and try things. And, and you know, in CS6, there's some, some pretty cool new features. And, and one of them is, I would like to say, theoretically, is intended to help you select skin tones on someone's face. And anyone who's tried it knows that it's kind of a little bit hit or miss. I mean, it works some yeah. of the time. But I tried to think, what, how other ways could I use this? And what's kind of neat about this idea is that once you see the whole thing, you'll see Hold most on a of second. it. Dave, <laughs> what are you doing, RC? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it was just different. Can, can, can we some. pull up RC's computer really quick? How do I get in there? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Hold on, put, can, we, can we, all right, we, we can see it? Mm. There. <laughs> Hold on. Mm. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. Oh, good grief. Mm. Well, not, see, I look, I look, oh, there we go. <laughs> Children. Wait, let's take a picture. Hey, right there. <laughs> One. Two. Yeah, right there. <laughs> good. Oh, my okay. God. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the tutorial. <laughs> Who needs uh, Photoshop? Yeah, really, just what is photo booth and have fun. All right, sorry, so, Dave. No problem. I, I, just, I, it's okay. I looked over at you and, and <laughs> you saw that in I, the background. I can see that. that could be a little distracting. <laughs> so this this technique, one of the things that that's always kind of neat to be able to do is when you find something that works and you realize you could record the whole thing as an action. So if you had a whole series of photographs, you could do it. So I'm not going to start recording, but I could. 
So what I want to do is make a little more interesting look out of this photograph. So first of all, I'm going to go to select color range and initially use this option, which has always been there, is to select the shadow areas. So it makes that selection. I'm going to press Command or Control J to put that up on a layer. And then I want to fill that with black. But I want to only fill the pixels that are there. So I'm going to make sure preserved transparency is turned on. So therefore, I'll just get black pixels on a layer like this. That looks cool by looks, itself. It kind of does, doesn't it? And then you go back to here. Now, what I used to do was select the midtones or the highlights, but I've been playing around recently with the CS6 feature to go in here and choose skin tones. And normally, I wouldn't be terribly happy if that's the result it gave me mm -hmm. if I was really trying to select his face. But what I'm going to do in this case is, again, use that, put that on a layer by itself, and then fill that. And I'm going to use, I don't want to use white because I want to have some touch of color there. So I'm going to use a very pale kind of a gray color. And again, preserve transparency. So when you put the two together, you get this kind of interesting mm. little effect. So I'm going to merge these two together. Now that I have that, I'm going to copy it and just sort of keep it as a, a reference. The other thing that I've been playing with that's kind of fun because really you don't know, I don't know what to expect is this new adjustment layer called Color Lookup. Because most adjustment layers, you, know, you click on things and move sliders here, it's like you pick something from a menu and you just say, what does this do? And it adds some kind of cool effect. You know, it kind of looks like an antique photo or something. Yeah. A it's really meant photo. for video. Yeah, but. but I mean, you can do all kinds of things with it because it basically takes your color palette and replaces it with mm -hmm. a different color palette. So just that by itself is kind of neat, but I figure, well, let's take it a step further. What if I pasted that mask on there and then went back? It's going to just make a very subtle change if I take the mask and invert it. It's going to make so the background stays the way it was. So that's one possibility. The other one is just to go back to this layer, which by itself looks kind of, I mean, even that might be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But this is where playing with different blend modes, um, you know, something like maybe hue, I mean, I mean not that one, uh, color or luminosity. It just, it's going to give you different options. So the, cool. the main thing that this does that I like about it is it just lets me try things because Previously, I used to use techniques like this, and what it was doing was selecting either the highlights or the midtones. It would mm -hmm. be okay, but when you're really trying to get the face, that ability to say select yep. the skin tones and then use that as part of a, either an overlay or a mask or something, it just opens up some possibilities yeah, like that it. weren't there before. Okay. And like I said, that whole thing, nothing I did there was so specific, I could have easily recorded all those steps as an action and then applied it to other mm -hmm. photographs to get to this result. Well, we're still on your screen there, so I, I saw you going through the blend modes. A little keyboard shortcut mm -hmm. is uh, with a shift plus and shift minus. Yeah, that's the quick way to go through the, yeah. the blend modes. Yeah, when you're not sure, you might actually. Yeah, when you're not one. sure what your which go. one you want, you just <laughs> press that. Now on the that's PC, what I, you can. That's what I do. You can I, also I never just. Know. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. Who's I mean, ever sure? Ooh, that's kind of like a little Terminator look there or something. That's weird. Awesome. All right, hey guys, we uh, we still have Corey and RC up for tutorials. We are gonna take a very quick minute, a very quick break. We'll see you back here in just a minute. Chinese fire drill. Composition. What is it? Does this work? What about this? Leading lines, rule of odds, the rule of thirds. Viewpoints, patterns, contrast, balance. Dead center is deadly. I'm Rick Salmon. I really hope you can join me for my latest class on Kelby Training, Composition, The Strongest Way of Seeing. I'll show you how to compose technically as well as emotionally. You could be, you could be senior. Hey, <laughs> we're back. That was a quick break. That was Jen. quick. Can we have more commercials? Can we get like three <laughs> commercials in next time? We need to rest from that now. Um, anyway, welcome back to Photoshop <laughs> User TV. And uh, we have a tutorial. From the one and only, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The two and only. The two and only. <laughs> we have a tutorial from Corey coming up here. What do you got this week, Corey? I actually got something. Uh, Kind of playing, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of playing around with making photos look aged and really old lately, and it's been a lot of fun. And uh, here's a really quick and easy one, and uh, actually this is a shot I took at Joel Grimes' workshop a couple weekends ago. He had uh, uh, several models come in, and this girl was really kind of, she was cute, but she was really pale, and she put on this long black dress, and I'm thinking, 
Dark Shadows, you know that movie with the mm -hmm. creepy and everything like that? So I'm thinking all these cool things I can do with it. But it actually plays well for this aged photo effect. So I'm not really gonna do any corrections here. I'm just going to select her and extract her from the background here. So I'm just gonna, again, use the quick selection tool. We all know how quick and easy that is. And just paint a selection around my subject here. What did we do before the quick selection tool? <laughs> who knows? Worked and a lot cares? harder. <laughs> the pen. Yeah. The how many people use the pen anymore? Who uses the pen? Honestly. Not for that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We'll have to do a... For, for selections? Not really anymore. No, I use it for other things, but... Yeah, to draw, but yeah. I, I haven't used the pen for selection in a long very time. long time. I, I didn't even, I, I wrote a whole chapter on selections in my compositing book. I didn't even cover the pen because. Mm -hmm. It's a different it animal. Now. I mean, it's still, it's still, I think it's still viable, but it's still, it's a different, you know, whatever. What All I right. tell people is if you're already a whiz with the pen, maybe keep using it, but I wouldn't tell a new user you should start using the pen as a selection tool. That's it's true. not an yeah. easy no, thing no, to no. learn. Yeah, not with what else is in there now. So, so with the object selected, I'm just going to go into Refine Edge and it's going to extract it. Now, here is the curious part about this. Because I'm gonna put this on an aged photo, or an aged textured background, rather, I don't need it to be a really super precise selection here. So you know how sometimes when you use this refine radius tool and paint in an area, sometimes it gets a little too much? Like it if you gets go into too good. <laughs> it's a dark oh, area. Yeah, no, yeah, notice right how it takes out there. a little bit of that sleeve there. Ordinarily, that would be a problem. But in this case, I'm actually going to keep it because I want a little bit of that edge kind of deteriorating away there. So I'm actually going to continue around the uh, head here and it's taking away. So actually, it's doing a really good job. And I'm just going to go in here and coin in deeper into the subject than I normally would. It's around the edge here. So you can really see it's pulling away some of that edge area. And this was actually by accident. When I first started playing with this, I did that. I was like, oh, no, it's going into there. And I was thinking, Wait a minute, it kind of makes it look a little worn out there, which is perfect for what we're going for. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this out as out of Refine Edge with a new layer with a layer mask. I think that should be the default setting, to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. It should be on a layer mask, but um, I'm gonna click OK and there it is, extracted. Now I've got my background here. Let's go ahead and bring it up, this texture. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my subject over and it's really cool how simple this is. I have the one layer. I'm actually going to scale her up a little bit here. And the first thing is I'm going to change the, is the blend mode of my subject layer. I'm just going to change it from normal down to lumin uh, luminosity. So it looks OK, but not done there. Going to take this and add a adjustment layer. And we're going to do a black and white adjustment layer. And the reason why I like this is that kind of Joel, when I was at Joel Grimes' workshop, kind of reminded me of this of what you can really do with this particular adjustment, is I'm going to first change the blend mode of the adjustment layers. One thing I love about adjustment layers is that, yes, it makes the adjustment, but you can also change its blend mode to change that adjustment or enhance it somewhat. So in this case, I'm actually going to change it from normal to multiply. And to isolate it to the layer, of course, I'm going to clip it inside there. So just hold down Option or Alt on Windows, click between the layers, there we go. And over in the black and white adjustment window, I'm just gonna move these sliders. If I move the red, you can see the face gets considerably brighter. I can move yellow and make her hair a lot brighter as well. Bring that green down, there we go. So I'm adjusting specific tones uh, based on the colors here, because um, there's a lot of red and yellow in her face. And as I adjust those, you can see it's really kind of blowing it out in the face there, it looks pretty good. And I can, of course, come back in and tweak that um, a little bit later. Here's another issue. The edges. I can see the kind of frayed edges of that hair, and it's not looking like I would really want it to. So here's a cool trick. I'm going to go and select the layer mask on my subject layer. So we'll make sure we're painting on the, the layer mask itself. And go and get a brush. And just a simple soft edge brush, but I'm changing the brush blend mode to overlay. I'm not going to paint normal, but rather paint in overlay mode and then painting with black, because what we're gonna do is basically choke in the mask on our subject by painting it. So notice what happens when I start painting around the edge here. Those frayed edges just really disappear. And we'll just come around here. And notice it tends to blend a little bit better. Notice when I go into the areas where it was uh, getting into the clothing, as I paint with that black and overlay, it really kind of gives that edging Almost gives me kind of a side light effect, but also kind of wears out the edges of the subject as well. So it's a little deteriorated. Yeah, exactly. 
So, and then now, to really blend it with the texture, it looks like it's really aged. This is, as old as this feature is, it's still really cool when you play around with it. I'm gonna You're double going click. You're not pattern maker, are you? No. <laughs> what, pattern what? No. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna double click on the subject layer here, open up the layer style panel, and in the blending options, we have the blend if sliders. These are still, to this day, one of the coolest features, and most underrated, I think. But uh, what I'm gonna do is go into the underlying layer here, and again, if you hold down Option or Alt, you can split the sliders here, and notice what happens around the edge of the subject when I move this slider in. That texture starts oh, yeah. to creep in. And if I, I can even split the white slider on this side and just split it ever so slightly and bring some of that white texture into the subject here and it starts to wear out a little bit more. Cool. Really kind of blending it in the background there. And then finally, just to help it blend a little bit better, I'm going to drop the overall layer opacity to about 90%. I'll click OK, and there we have it. Now, nice. to add one final touch to this, let me actually move this up. Hey, Corey, can I, can I, while you got your layers palette open there? Yes. See that little icon all the way to the right of the yes, layer? Yes, actually, good so point. I was going new to inside of CS6. point that out on CS6. When you would make a blend if adjustment, it would not indicate it on the layer. You'd have to yeah. remember it or mark it some other way to remember that you did a blend if adjustment. Now it adds this little icon here letting you know that you've made that very type of adjustment on there. So that's a really great, simple, seems like a simple thing, but uh, You're I, think, I think a critical one. Because <laughs> yeah. I use blend ifs a lot and I always tend yeah. to forget. I'm like, why is it so light? Yeah, and you then, never know when it was used. Yeah. So lastly, on that background layer, I'm just gonna add a layer style on this, which is an inner glow, Don't to give it. it kind of an, uh, a dark border effect. So I'm just gonna get, select the color here, and I'm just gonna sample this color down the bottom here. Set my blend mode to color burn, and then just increase the size and then drop the opacity down to around 40-ish. Mm. And then, there you have it. A nicely aged, old-fashioned looking photo. Very nice, Mr. Barker. It's in a couple layers, so just really cool stuff. That guy, he knows Photoshop over there. A little bit, yeah. Just, no, I, I was actually just reading this, this very book here before the show came on. It. Oh, <laughs> that's, that thing is very <laughs> thorough. Very, very Would that be Corey thorough, Barker's down and dirty uh, why, Photoshop why, down in dirty tricks for designers. Yes, it is well. actually. Yes, it's very, what, a, what a coincidence! And I bet you people could find that <laughs> in many more similar tutorials in said book. Maybe. <laughs> hey, maybe we'll give away a copy. Yes, absolutely. Throw it over. Yes, there we go. All right, coming at you. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just landed into the prize package for this week. <laughs> Just RC. For, I, I, I'm checking out everything on Google Plus. I posted the picture that you put, <laughs> and somebody. Uh, so Ben Seller said, watch out RC, it's lemur guy. <laughs> Somebody else wrote, Ben Hollingsworth wrote, he likes, he likes to move it, move it. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That looks like what's it, uh, and from Madagascar? From Madagascar, yeah. <laughs> Dennis Oda wrote, RC, oh my God, it's leisure suit Larry. <laughs> That's a good throwback right there. But a lot of the times, like, we're, we're getting into this format with what, where what we're doing is taking this and we're putting this stuff online, right? So we're broadcasting a lot of these shows online, so we want to make sure that you guys have a little bit of a connection, right? We want you to talk to us. Yeah. So the best way for you to do that is just to make sure that you're over at kelbytv.com forward slash on air, and then you can go ahead and you can catch most of that stuff. So cool. I thought it was really cool that people were actually like interacting and talking about Oh the yeah, that's what, I mean, that's what makes it fun about doing it live and, and everything like that. Except when you post photos like that. Well, I think you have a little bit of experience with Photo Booth having a couple kids. Oh, yeah. You guys exactly. spend a lot of time probably playing on Photo Dude, Booth. Dude, that was, you know, it, it's, they're 9 and 10 now, so they're not so into it. But, man, when they were like 5, 6, 7 <laughs> years old, they'd spend an hour in front of Photo Booth. It was the best thing. Well, I, I shouldn't say they're over it now because they do it on my iPad. Nice. And Never then, over yeah, it. And you know what they do? They, they take pictures of themselves on my iPad. And then they do all the crazy pictures, and they set it as my home screen. <laughs> so nice. I go and I flip on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> nice, we'll never nice, get too nice. old because we're still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. RC, cool. what you got? All right. Well, I had a tip here, real quick, how to talk about booth? how to use Photo Booth. <laughs> Basically, it was just talking a little bit about how I work with HDR. Like a lot of the times, I, I mean, I use Photomatics, I use Nix uh, HDRFX Pro, and a lot of the times people are like, well, you know, do you use Photoshop's and can you use Photoshop's? And the answer is, yeah, you can use it every now and again, right? It's not what I would go to originally, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get good work out of it. Here are some things to keep in mind. 
If you go inside of HDR FX, let's say if you go to HDR Pro, I'm gonna go to File, Automate, I'm gonna merge to HDR Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and select a folder that I have already set up here called HDR Lobby. So that's got some files that I wanna work with. I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. It's gonna take those files and it's gonna merge those together. Here's the trick. When you're working with this, what you need to do is you need to keep in mind that there are some sliders that can be really, really cranked up, yeah, and there are some <laughs> sliders where you have to touch them ever so slightly. The difference between that will make all of the difference when you're working with the shop. So let me show you what I mean by here. So it's gonna take this, it's gonna align this, and oftentimes I also like to use Photoshop to create 32-bit HDR files because of the ghosting algorithm. The ghosting algorithm inside of Photoshop, I think is really, really good. Yeah. So more often than not, I'll go to it first. So here I have this file. You'll see that we have some ghosting right here. So in this area here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove ghosts. You see all of this blur with people here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on one of these middle exposures. Done. Now, from here, I'm gonna switch over to 16-bit. And now here's the setting, right? So I have this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna save this preset. I'm just gonna call it Lobby for now. But let's go ahead and switch back over to our default. So this is what your default's gonna look like when you're working with it. Now, instead of here, uh, looks great. I'll set my, yeah, it's like, <laughs> all right, well, you gotta do some stuff to it. But inside of here, we'll go ahead and we'll grab this. And now watch, this is what I would do here. Detail. Crank it, right? Radius, you start bringing up, little by little, little by little, little by little, right? If you bring it up a little bit too high, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start seeing that haloing. You don't necessarily want that. The strength slider is the slider that messes everything up. <laughs> if you grab the strength slider, notice that it's at 0.53. If I move it to 0.67, look, the moment that you grab it and you bring it yeah. up and up and up, it starts just messing everything up. So we call it the mess up slider? Yeah, the mess up <laughs> slider. So I'll bring my strength slider and I'll bring the strength slider way low when you're working with this, right? But my detail goes all the way up. So detail all the way up, radius, I start inching up. And I'm pretty generous on the radius, but the strength slider is the one that stays really low and you just kind of nudge that little by little by little. Now, this looks like it's a mess, but you'd be surprised as to how much you can pull out of this. Watch. My gamma is usually the next slider that I go into. I usually drag it over to the left to make the image overall darker. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and just come over here and just gamma. go to my <laughs> curves, bring that all the way up here. And now we have an HDR file that we can work with. So from here, you can go ahead and take this file and a lot of the times, the other tip that I usually tell people is, when you're working with HDR files, HDR has to deal with tone. It has nothing to do with color. You keep that in mind, you're gonna do really, really well when you work with these HDR files. Like if you notice, the file was kind of shot at a white balance that kind of makes everything look a little yellowy. Yeah. Don't worry about that, right? Sometimes you're just gonna keep messing up and messing around with all these HDR files. It's fine, it's gonna be good, you're gonna be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just Kind of bring this all the way over here. There's our file. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. Let's just call it test. And now I'm gonna close it. From here, go to file open. I'm gonna go back to the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that test file. And let's go ahead and uh, let's get, I'm gonna save this right here on the desktop. I hate it when you forget where you put it. Oh God, I hate that. I hate it, I hate it. Which is, by the way, what just happened there, but we, <laughs> right. we, we kind of glazed over it really Right, quick. so if I forget what I do, usually what I'll do is I'll just go to open recent, find it, and then save it where exactly where I want, which is why it shows up there. So now inside of here, grab the same file, but this time, instead of having a format of Photoshop, I'm gonna select the format called Camera Raw, because I like using Camera Raw for toning. Now, see all of this color right here? All of that can be changed. All of that exposure can be changed. So this I find to be so much oh, easier yeah. to be able to work with when you're doing those images. Now, I have one that's already processed and completed for you to take a look at. So 
The Much only better. thing that's different here, if you take a look at the layers, right? So we start from the beginning. There's my sharpening. I usually use Nick HDRFX Pro. A little glamour glow action. There's a curves adjustment layer to darken the top. And here's a hue saturation layer. That's it. Nice. A little bit of a vignette. And you're I pretty like much it. good to go. So a lot of the times people are like, well, you can't create good HDR on Photoshop. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you oh, can. Yeah. It actually it's, can be pretty good. You, you, I think it was you that kind of did the guitar analogy. I mean, mm -hmm. by and large, guitars are the same. Mm -hmm. And it's just everybody, you know, some people like a Fender, some people like Ibanez, some people like, you know, all the different types of guitars. By and large, they're all going to play fairly the same. They're all going to sound, you know, to anybody walking by, they'd never even notice a difference. But piano, it's piano to the piano, person yeah. that's actually using it. It makes it makes a big difference, and you got to feel it. It's it, it very much a feel thing, because because I think you use something different than I use than Scott uses. You know, Scott Scott uses Photoshop's HDR all the time. Mm -hmm. I use Photomatics, and I think you like HDR Fix Pro. Mm -hmm. So, all right, um, we got prizes. We do a break first, I think. Never mind. We're supposed to do a break first. <laughs> I'll listen to Dave because Dave's always right. Dave, what do we do? Toss to break. That's what it says there on the thing. Do what Dave said. We'll be right back after these short massages. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Of course I Hi, I'm Bill Frakes. I'm a Sports Illustrated staff photographer. Come join my class in environmental sports portraiture. Learn how to have athletes moving at top speed in the context of the games they play and use the camera to control it so it's action yet still a portrait. We're going to talk about my general gear, we're going to talk about specific setups for basketball, football, and baseball. The things you need to be successful covering each of those sports. So come check out my latest class on kelbytraining.com. And we are back live on a set of Photoshop User TV. Dave. Yes. Where can they watch us live? They can watch us live at kelbytv.com slash on air. So if you want to watch us live, go to where Dave just told you to go to because <laughs> you can you can see the show live and you can um, well hopefully one day be able to interact with us too more <laughs> when we're live on the show so we can take questions and all those things. It's which hopefully is kind of one of the points of being live. All right, we got. But at the very contest. least, they can see before editing. So when it's live. Yeah. It's we, like... So and we <laughs> actually we actually play. The uh, like before the show starts, so you'll see everybody kind of getting in here, getting their laptop set up. RC usually comes in naked, <laughs> um, and he puts his clothes on right in right in front of the set. It's really it, it's quite mm -hmm. a sight to see. Mm -hmm. I, I what can I tell you? I like <laughs> he I walks like, around the office naked, I like being so it's, naked. it's not any different. There's, a, there's a sauna actually on the other side of that wall. That's where it's <laughs> a comfort. Thing. I usually just kind of put my towel back around me and just go <laughs> sit in the back. He's got his old slippers that he just kind of knock it out <laughs> real quick. All right, Dave, we got uh, prizes? We do. We got a, a bunch of stuff. Site Grinder 3, a nice plug-in for Photoshop to allow you to generate websites from Photoshop layers. Very cool. Cool. The wonderful On One Perfect Photo Suite 6, which is a whole combination of like seven products that work with Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, Aperture, or standalone. Awesome. And, and some crazy book by some crazy Photoshop guy that happens to be over that way. Yeah, I've got a lot of good stuff out of that book, you know. <laughs> it's your favorite book, I, isn't I, it? I rip, I rip stuff out of, off of this book all the time. It's, it's my go-to place to rip stuff off from. So Corey's Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designer's Book, and you can win all that stuff by... Making a paper airplane, I don't know, going to kelbytv.com. Once again, you'll find there's a Photoshop user TV place for comments. You can just simply leave a hey there or suggestions for tutorials, questions you have, whatever you like, and we will randomly well, pick someone's name. Nice. And it's by we, nice. I mean someone other than us, yeah. so we have no control over that kind of thing. Mean, mean comments guarantee that you don't win a prize. <laughs> it's True just, enough. It just kind of goes that way. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So you can leave a mean comment. You're just not going to win anything. We'll guarantee a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, that wraps it up for the show this week. Corey, you got anything, uh, any parting words of wisdom? Uh, my review of Men in Black 3? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Like good it? One. I liked it. Very good movie. Yes. I, I recommend it. Over Battleship, even though you said you liked that one. So. I liked Battleship. I saw that. I didn't see Men in Black 3, though. So <laughs> I saw Battleship this week, and I thought, uh, 
I thought Battleship was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, Dave, what's your uh, movie review? I saw this week? really good movie called Star Wars. It was quite good. Dude, I was, uh, I've awesome. heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> RC, I'm gonna stick with the Avengers. There you That's go. Still the <laughs> Avengers is still the movie to be. Movie of the season. That's right. It is pretty good. It's probably the only movie that I'm going to watch all season. But <laughs> <laughs> it'll be the, uh, it'll, everybody watches movies and I'm usually just like. Now, have you seen you know. it yet? The yes. Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's of course saying, I have. Just, Come on, what are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, with the first thing, with the uh, flying. He was at that uh, midnight show when it first opened. <laughs> in, the, in the buildings. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you to, uh, to my fellow Photoshop guys here for, uh, for joining us this week. Thank you for everybody to, uh, for, for watching us this week. And thanks to our sponsors for sponsoring us this week. Well done. We will see you right back next week here on Photoshop User TV. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Busy.